course, in staying positive, busting some big myths today so you can see what you're doing wrong and how to get it right. Amy Weiland, Director of Training for Positive IQ, is here to set us straight. Thanks for being here. I'd love to be here. So Thank you. positivity, such a great topic, obviously. Why do we need to rethink our approach to it, though? I think sometimes we beat ourselves up over being not being positive enough. So when we're going through something difficult or if we're grieving, we think I should be positive through this process. That's not always the case. In fact, you say there are a lot of positivity myths out yes. there. Take us through a few of those. So I think sometimes we believe that we need to be constantly happy and that positivity is feeling happiness all of the time. Where that's not the case, we're not impenetrable people. We feel things, we grieve, uh, we get upset. So anger is something that is very natural. But the idea is to come back to the positive place but feel those feelings as you're going through them. Is this something you see women in particular struggle with? Uh, I would say yes. yes. I think we tend to uh, want to get through difficulty very quickly. I also see a lot of women, I see this with men too, they want to have their children get through difficulty quickly as well. So they'll say things like be positive, just look for the silver lining and sometimes no just be sad and it's okay to be sad but you won't always be sad so the other myth is that we have to be really enthusiastic I liked this point that positivity does not equate enthusiasm no in fact this is what I love about positivity it looks different on everyone so sometimes I think we associate uh, people with very bubbly personalities or they're really outgoing as being positive people and they might be very positive, but it doesn't mean we have to be outward mm -hmm. all of the time. Mm -hmm. It's practicing positive patterns within ourselves. That inner mindfulness can Absolutely. be just as powerful. And it's funny you say that. I have a dear friend. I love her soul. I love her spirit. The other day it dawned on me though, she is really bubbly and outgoing, mm -hmm. yet her words aren't always matching her demeanor. Speaking to yeah. what you're saying, you can be bubbly and be negative. I, I think that's absolutely true. I think it's a really good observation. Your next myth you say is that a lot of people feel like in order to be positive, I have to accept everything that's mm -hmm. happening to me and around me. Being positive is not being passive. So positivity is progressive. In fact, when we want to have more happiness or more positivity, we have to do things that make us feel a little uncomfortable and we have to push through that. So instead of being complacent and saying, well, maybe I don't like the way things are being done mm -hmm. and saying there's nothing I can do about it because maybe that's being negative. No, being positive is saying it's having that element of hope that we can push through difficult things and make things better for us and for our families and our communities. So what's a healthy approach, Amy, to positivity? What does that look like to you? What does that defini definition look like? So the first two I really like hope and optimism those are things that people commonly associate with with positivity hope that things will get better mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this is the interesting thing too as we're grieving we can have elements of positivity absolutely that they can exist together but it's not overrunning our grief but hope that I won't always feel this way and optimism in that someday I might learn from this. I don't know what it is right now. I'm just sad. But someday I might benefit from something that has happened. See, I love that. I love the brain bend that I can be hopeful and mm -hmm. I can be sad. Absolutely. They're not At mutually the same time, exclusive. They are not mutually exclusive. We can, they can absolutely coexist in the same formula. You also point out the determination is, is a player here in the role of positivity. We have to have that determination to create a better life, a, a, good, a good life for ourselves. So this is the action part. The first two are, are very much in the thought or the cognition process. Internal, yeah. Absolutely. And then we in implement love and relationships, that's positive. But determination is this grit, this I have the capability to get through this. And not only get through it, but come out on the other end a little stronger because of it. So Dr. Angela Duckworth calls it grit. She's done extensive research on finding what your passion is and working towards it, and even when you experience setbacks, you get back up and you try again. I'm so in love with that word grit. We've talked about it a little right. bit here in this space, but yeah. you know, instilling grit in your children or developing yes. grit in yourself, it's a really, really empowering, I mm -hmm. think, goal. Well, and especially for your kids too, implementing that grit doesn't mean telling them right away, they maybe they don't succeed, they don't win the race they wanted to, rent, to win. It's not saying, well, you'll do better next time, or just be positive, no, it's, Maybe you're disappointed. Are you disappointed? That makes sense. Do you, what else do you feel? Well, I'm sad. Okay, but yeah. you won't always feel sad. Yeah, there's the hope. That's part of the grit. 
because the next time they'll try again. Where can we go if we want more positive strategies? You're putting such great information and resources out there. Thank you, so Positive IQ, you can take our positivity assessment to see where you are in terms of your own Positive IQ. So PositiveIQ.com and you can follow us on Facebook and, and also Instagram. Thank you for the brain bend, a new approach, a new way to think about positivity, which we know is so important, we appreciate it.